اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله لا لا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى سيدنا محمد وصحبه وبارك عليه السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته everybody thank you for joining us today on behalf of the Janjira Hafsani Society we would like to welcome you to our virtual cooking show of 2021 today is the second part of uh, last week and continues from last week's session. My name is Rabia Karim, and together with my co-host, Atal Rasande, we'll be hosting you for the day. Thank you for joining us again this week and of, after an overwhelming success and participation of last week. In 2020, we had Cook Along and we decided to showcase a virtual cooking show in 2021 again, highlighting our heritage. We have some delicious mouth-watering culinary dishes. Our fantastic cooks gave up of their time to share the kitchens with you. Just to mention that our main sponsor for 2021 is Cajiso Acid Management. We would like to start today's proceedings with an opening kirab from Hafiz Tanweer Ahmed Faki. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما محمد إلا رسول قد خلت من قبله الرسل أفإن مات أو قتلا قلبتم على Thank you. 
Hey, sorry everyone, we're gonna restart shortly. We just have a bit of a technical problem. Okay, Aziza. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما محمد إلا رسول قد خلت من قبله الرسل أفإن مات أو قتل انقلبتم على وَمَنْ يَنْقَلِبَ عَلَى عَقْلِ 
بيتي فلن يدور الله شيئا وسيجزي الله الشاكرين وما كان لنفس أن تموت إلا بإذن الله كتابا مؤجلا ومن يرد ثواب الدنيا نؤته منها ومن يرد ثواب الآخرة نؤته منها وسنجد الشاكرين وكأي من نبي قاتل معه ربيون كثير فما وهنوا لما أصابهم فما وهنوا لما أصابهم في سبيل الله وما ضعفوا وما استكانوا والله يحب الصابرين وما كان قولهم إلا أقدامنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين فآتاه الله ثواب الدنيا وحسن ثواب الآخرة والله يحب المحسنين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ما كان على النبي من حرج فيما فرض الله له سنة الله في الذين خلوا من قبل وكان أمر الله قدرا مقدورا الذين يبلغون رسالات الله ويخشونه ولا يخشون أحدا إلا الله وكفى بالله حسيبا ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولكن رسول الله ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين وكان الله بكل شيء عليما يا أيها الذين آمنوا اذكروا الله ذكرا وسبحوا بكرة وأصيلا هو الذي يصلي عليكم وملا المؤمنين رحيما تحيتهم يوم يلقونه سلام وأعد لهم أجرا كريما يا أيها النبي إنا أرسلناك شاهدا ومبشرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا وبشر المؤمنين بأن لهم
Jazakallah to Hafiz um, Tanweer for that beautiful recitation. Um, apologies in the meantime for the technical glitches that we're having. We're still clearing the gremlins from the system. We will now hand over to our chairperson of the GIS Committee Society, um, Dr. Nisad Kudode. Assalamu alaikum to all viewers. May the peace and blessing of God be with you today, tomorrow, and always. I would like to welcome you wherever you may be. As I know, last week we had many viewers from the UK, Netherlands, and the UAE. Today we will be presenting the second part of the Janjira Afsani culinary extravaganza. We are indeed pleased that so many of our followers enjoyed the session last week, and I hope you will enjoy today's edition as well. Food is truly universal. It has the power to bring everyone together. Cooking is all about people, no matter what culture or background. Food for us comes from our family, whether they have wings or fins or roots. Food has a culture, it has a history, it has a story, it has relationships. It is indeed encouraging when we receive such positive comments and suggestions as the team putting these presentations together do so voluntarily. So when the efforts are acknowledged, it certainly inspires them to do more and better. As chairperson of JESS, I'm proud of the specific teams of JESS who are always striving to deliver professional and quality programs without receiving any payments. Last week, some viewers asked, what does JESS do? I'm just gonna give a brief snapshot as I believe during the course of the morning, the program directors will give more details about our activities. We are a nonprofit society trying our level best to assist the community in areas of education by providing bursaries, providing relief aid to widows, indigent and the needy, hosting cultural and religious programs and participating in events that further uplifts our communities. Just as an example, during the COVID pandemic, we supported health sectors in certain initiatives. I'm extremely proud of JIS because since its inception, JIS is run totally on a voluntary basis. We do not charge an admin fee. Besides having an MPO status, we also a public, uh, public a, a PBO so that whatever you donate, you can get a tax rebate. We welcome members to join us whereby you can play an active role and contribute to the programs that we undertake. In closing, I wish to thank our sponsors to make this program possible, our presenters for sharing the delicate recipes and opening their homes, our viewers for their valuable time, and more importantly, your feedback. And finally, the JES team for putting it all together. I hope you enjoy the experience. Thank you. Shukran Nisar for that beautiful message. Um, I would like to thank all our sponsors who have um, made today's show possible as well as last week's show. Um, we do run um, just runs various campaigns and we have a short video to showcase that. We also encourage many of you as possible, um, families and friends to get involved and be part of JIS and volunteer your precious time because time is our most precious commodity and sharing that is very important to everyone so that we all may benefit. These are a few highlights of 2021. So the Janjira Afsani Educational Society and Social Society is a registered PBO. The organization's structure consists of executive members with eight office bearers and 12 ordinary members. All officials and members are elected at an AGM. All the officials on the GS executive serve purely on a voluntary basis. The administrative staff also serve voluntarily and no salary is paid to any executive member or administrative staff. The organization was established in 1916 in Cape Town with a primary focus on supporting needy students with financial assistance so that they may fulfill their academic aspirations. 
Over the past 106 years, thousands of students have been beneficiaries of our bursary fund, particularly during the apartheid years of our history. Up until today, we continue to support many who do not qualify for the state-sponsored NESFAS aid. We would like to assist many more and can do more if we gain funding from board, the broader corporate sector to complement our logistical and human resource capacity. We have no political affiliations and we work across the board in, service, in the service of humanity. Most members subscribe to a particular faith, however our bursaries, food parcels, and any other financial aid is offered to all with no limitation to any religious group. Our organization serves the needs of people across different castes, creeds, races, religions, and genders, and we undoubtedly assist across visual and cultural boundaries. Just to highlight again and to mention that our bursary project, the project is our flagship since 1916, and we hope to continue to serve the needy in fulfilling the educational aspirations and empowerment towards a better society. Since 1994 to date, 619 students receive support from our fund, notwithstanding the ever increasing cost of university fees. We are indeed humbled that our donors have continued to support us across the decades. The confidence in our administrative capability to render service to needy students in their educational needs remain appreciative of their support. Thank you. Um, I would like to confirm the proceedings of today. So we have various cooks lined up. Um, we would encourage you to share your feedback and, com feedback and comments um, about the videos and any questions that you may have in our chat box. We encourage that. Please remember that um, the, there are prizes up for grabs for the most interactive um, person on the chat. Um, so we love interaction and any comments that you might have. We also have a grand prize winner that um, would be the person answering the correct questions that are based on last week's and this week's sessions. So please uh, listen carefully so that you'll be able to uh, be, uh, be able to win this prize. We also have uh, vouchers or compliments of district, Chick, district cafe up for grabs. Um, and yes, we encourage all the interactions as much as possible, please. So our cooks are as follows. First up, we have um, Aisha Abdullah, who will be demonstrating the making of gulab jambu, uh, also known as gulab jamun. We also have crayfish curry by Zahra Bandika Roika and Fitzim Bandika. Followed after that is chicken acne by Zahida Sande. And lastly, we'll have Dalbi by Aisha Parker and Rafika Mahate. So our first cook, Aisha Abdullah, um, will be making gulab jamun. Now, gulab jamun is an Indian dessert of fried dough balls that are soaked in a syrup um, and sometimes, depending on the cook, sprinkled with um, colored coconut. So as per tradition, the syrup has a delicate rose flavor. The, which, which is where the name is derived of gulab, which means rose, and jamun refers to a berry of similar size and color. Aisha Abdullah is a chartered accountant by trade, but a foodie at heart. She loves traditional foods, but is also keen to try new dishes. You are able to follow her on Instagram at Aisha underscore foodie underscore mom. Underscore mom. We will now watch the video of Aisha doing the gulab jamun.
Assalamu alaikum everybody and welcome to my de demonstration of uh, gulab jambu for the Hapsani uh, food extravaganza. Thank you to all of you for joining in today. So in, in preparation for doing this demonstration I just googled you know what is gulab jambu um, and I actually found there were only a few posts that mentioned gulab jambu as such. The proper traditional name is actually gulab jamun um, and it's actually a Persian uh, dessert. It, the word gulab, um, if you split out the word, um, gul means flour and ab means water. So where they actually got the name from is from the rose syrup water that they normally traditionally dip the, the dessert into. Um, and then jamun is actually a Hindi word. Um, an Indian fruit, it's actually a black plum, which is quite similar in size and shape to the gulab jambun. So that is where they get the, the name jamun from as well. So yeah, that's for today we will be doing gulab jamun. Um, if anyone knows why we call it gulab jambu, um, please post and tell us why, why this would be. I did actually Google that and I couldn't find out what the reason for that was. So I'm thinking it's just you know, a dialect and how, um, how the, the word gets pronounced. Okay, so in this container I've already placed two cups of cake flour and two slightly heaped te uh, teaspoons of baking powder. Then I have 50 grams of butter, slightly softened, um, not melted butter though. Okay, then I have one egg. It's, this is an extra large egg which is about 59 grams. Um, if you are using a smaller egg, rather weigh out the egg because the reason is if you have too little egg in the mixture, you're going to end up with a dry mixture. So it's important to make sure that your egg is uh, the proper size. I have one tin of condensed milk. Then I've got some fine nutmeg and some fine uh, ground cardamom. And then of course the all important uh, one cup of semolina or tasty bit. So the process to make this is, you first of all, you sift your cake flour and your baking powder. You can add it into a, mix, a stand mixer or you can mix it by hand. Um, I prefer to use the stand mixer as the mixture is quite sticky, so your hands actually end up being quite sticky. Um, and even if you mix it with a, with a hand mixer or a spatula, you know, it might actually be difficult to mix because of the texture of the dough. So you sift your flour and your baking powder, then you add your slightly softened butter, you uh, give that a nice mix and then you um, beat your egg in, the, in your bowl before you place it into your um, stand mixer. Then you add your one tin of condensed milk, you add a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, a teaspoon of cardamom, depending on how strong you like your cardamom in your dough. Some people don't like the taste of cardamom, so you could just adjust that to taste. And um, your semolina. Actually, your semolina you could add once you've sifted your flour. So this doesn't necessarily come right at the end. Bulave to Jayari at Jimmy Galia, but so there is some gemel like a dunia. Now I could be done a miser, be fossile, but sick to hoi come or coina. Hemera supper put it there at two so much lay to Jahemere Hakkis and in a clay to Sasa Pebino. Okay, so now we have the flour and semolina and the baking powder in the bowl and I've added the butter and we just give it a mix. Um, while that is mixing, just a reminder um, for those of you that are doing this for the first time, you need to be aware that you need to use a proper cup measurement when you are making uh, the gulab jambu. Um, the reason for this is if you don't use proper measurements, your gulab jambu might, dough might end up a bit too dry, if you end up using a bit too much flour, or it may, might end up being a bit too soft if there's too little flour in the mixture. 
So the hint here is to use one proper cup measurement when you are measuring out all your ingredients. So this would be for your flour and for your semolina as well. Okay, so the mixer um, is older than me. So my mom got this as a wedding gift uh, nearly 50 years ago. I can't divulge my age. <laughs> Um, yeah, but it's still going strong, so Kenwoods are really made to last. Okay, I think the mixture's how it's supposed to look. I'm just going to consult with the expert, my mom, Shamshunisa Karim. Mommy, is this, uh, yes, does this mixture look right? Yes, it's right. But just use a spatula to mix it properly. Okay. Where did mommy get this recipe from? Well, my Barbie gave me this recipe, and she's from Purus. What's your Barbie's name? Her name is Amida Kalbi. Okay. Uh, so, shukran to my mamani for the uh, original recipe that we're using today. And where are you from? Where are you from? I'm from Hapsa. I'm from Pangar, but my husband is from Hapsa and Digi. Okay. Okay, so the mixture? It's fine, yeah. Okay, so just to show you what the mixture needs to look like. It's slightly, the butter's uh, just made the dough a bit crumbly. Okay. Um, now that we've done that, we're going to add the, the egg. So I've added the egg now to the mixture and I'll be putting it back on just to give it another mix. Okay, so I'm just making sure that I get all the condensed milk out of the tin. Um, as my mom always says, waste not, want what not. Um, but also the real reason for doing this is uh, if you're going to end up not using all the condensed milk in your tin, your mixture might end up a little bit too dry as there won't be enough moisture in your mixture. Now you can put your bowl back in your mixer. Don't forget to add your spices. So it's a quarter teaspoon of fine nutmeg. I'm just adding it directly to the bowl. And a teaspoon of fine cardamom. Can it be adjusted? Yeah. This is how much I'm throwing in. I don't like it to taste too much like cardamom because cardamom is quite a strong taste. Uh, let's hope that's enough. <laughs> Once you've mixed your dough, um, you can just take it out and just make sure that everything is combined. And then you need to leave your dough for at least 20 to 30 minutes to stand. Uh, the reason for that is so that um, all the moisture gets absorbed into the flour mixture um, and then also your dough is not as sticky um, because all the, some of the moisture would have been absorbed um, which will make it easier to mold into shapes and then fry. Okay now we'll just check with the expert and make sure that the, uh, the mixture is right and ready to stand. Yes, it's fine. Did you mix it from the bottom? Yes, I did. I did mix it from the bottom. Yeah, now it must stand. That's all. Yeah. It just it must uh, bind together, you know, otherwise it's too sticky. Okay. Okay, now that our dough has stood for about 20 to 30 minutes, um, it's not as sticky as it was before. Um, so we're ready to make the shapes now. Uh, we have a tray here with, that's been dusted with some flour so that the shapes don't stick to the tray. 
And you know, as this is a, t a dish that's normally made for special occasions, if you want to make this, um, for example, for Eid or for a wedding, um, and you want to be quite precise on your shapes, you could actually end up, you could actually make your shapes and measure each one so that it's each of the shapes are the same size and consistency um, at about 17 or 18 grams if you measure if you measure your your balls of dough okay so what we will do now is we'll um, maybe it's also best to put some flour on your hands so that the mixture doesn't stick to your hands and you make the round shapes first of all you make a round shape and my mom is going to demonstrate how to make the actual gulab jambu shape I think that was too quick, mommy. <laughs> so maybe just explain how you actually do it. You just roll the mixture between your fingers and you get the elongated shape like that. So just a disclaimer from my side, this is only the second time that I'm doing this. Um, so if I can do it, I'm sure you can also, also do it as well. If you don't want to go through all this process, you are allowed to make round gulab jambus. Um, but as my mom said, that's not the right shape. <laughs> <laughs> now that we're nearly ready to fry our gulab jambu, um, I will explain to you how to make the syrup. Um, while my mom is busy just uh, assisting with making all the shapes uh, uh, over there. Okay, so the syrup is like... Um, it's like your normal sugar syrup that you would use for a cassista or for a donut as well. You, the measurements are one and a half cups of sugar and one cup of water. Um, you bring that to boil. You can add a piece of stick cinnamon and a, a, a whole cardamom as well just to give it a little bit of extra flavor. Um, you bring it to boil until the, the, until the syrup is a bit sticky and then you switch off the syrup um, and you leave it to cool uh, slightly. The reason for cooling it slightly is if it's going to be too hot when you dip the, the gulab jambu in, into the syrup, it's going to absorb a lot of syrup and you're going to end up with a very uh, sticky, syrupy uh, gulab jambu. Um, not recommended for anybody that's diabetic, of course. So I'm taking a small piece of dough and I'm just popping it into the oil to see that the oil is hot enough. Uh, just a, a tip on when you are frying, uh, using the oil to fry the gulab jambu. We normally put the oil on before the time and heat it up and then leave it to cool. And when you're ready to fry, you put the oil back on again. The reason for this is if um, you're going to put the gulab jambu into the oil that's just been heated for the first time, it's going to, it might not fry completely correctly and you might end up with the dough still raw inside. Now we're ready to fry the gulab jambu um, and you can place each one gently into the oil and you will see that it's actually bubbling as you put it into the oil. You normally fry it for about two to three minutes until it's golden brown. Uh, just as you're frying just make sure that you're watching uh, it fry in the oil, uh, in the oil. Uh, you don't want it to fry too fast because otherwise it's going to end up being raw inside and also because of the shape uh, you might end up with one side frying a bit longer than the other side so it's always good just to have your um, slotted spoon available so that you can just give it a gentle turn as it's frying so that it fries evenly now that we've done frying our gulab chambu uh, this is basically the color that it needs to be, so a nice golden brown. Uh, we are now ready to syrup. So all you need to do is just place it into the syrup. The syrup doesn't have to be that hot. You can just place it in for uh, 30 seconds um, and then take it out.
Now that we've got our gulab jambus ready, you can enjoy it with a nice cup of tea and some good company. Mm, great diet. Bismillah.
All right, uh, from your co-host here, Taula Sunday, um, sitting by uh, with uh, Dr. Rabia Karim, of course, and uh, facilitating today's session. So, uh, of course, I'd like to just start off with the uh, beautiful words. Wahi hotahe jo manzure khuda hotahe. Whatever Allah wills, uh, will happen uh, naturally, of course. Um, um, Allah is great, of course, and everything we do, all the favors are from Him. So, indeed, we're looking forward to a very exciting uh, day of great culinary um, uh, excerpts, and uh, it's going to be fantastic, uh, just judging from last week's uh, wonderful array of dishes and the very, very appetizing uh, presentations. It's virtual, so one's mouth waters and you yearn for a bit of the real stuff, but hopefully our days will come soon, inshallah. Thank you, Rabia. Carry on. Thank you, Uncle Atawla. Um, we're going to go over to Aisha now, um, who's going to answer the questions that have been posed in the chat. Assalamu alaikum, Aisha. Wa alaikum salam, Rabia. Nice to see you. <laughs> yes, yes, it is good to see you. Are you well? Okay, alhamdulillah. So we have some questions for you in the chat. I don't know if you've seen them. I've seen some of them. Maybe you can just read them out and then I'll, I'll try and answer them. Sure. Um, let me just get to that again. So one of the questions were, um, must the balls, must it rest after making the balls? So after you've made the, um, the dough and you made the balls, should, should it rest before frying? Um, so not necessarily. Um, it does take a while to obviously make all the balls from all the, the mixture. Um, so by the time you end up frying the last batch, it would have rested. But it's, the, the main thing is to make sure that once you've mixed the dough, you let it rest for 20 to 30 minutes. I think that's that's the more important part. Once you've made okay. the board, you can, you can go ahead and fry that. So that's fine. Yeah. There's also been lots of comments about how easy you made it look. And I must admit, it does look quite easy. Normally, I just wait my mom to make a batch and then I just go and collect. But after watching this, uh, it seems like it's, uh, yeah, I've taken the daunting miss out of it. So I think I'll, I'll give it a go at some point. Um, there's another question from Bashir. And he asks, do you have to cool the gulab jamun before putting it into the syrup? So out of the frying pan, you let it cool first. Um, you don't need to like really let it cool, but just remember if it's if it's if it's going to be very hot, it's going to absorb the syrup um, quite a lot. So, you know, I think rather just let it rest for like five minutes or so, and then you just dip it in the syrup. Otherwise, you're going to end up uh, the the gulab jamun might become quite soggy because you know if you dip something warm in warm syrup, it's, it's going to absorb more syrup. Mm, that makes sense. Um, Fatima then says um, her gulabs are soft when freshly made but they, they become hard. Um, and she wonders if you might have any idea why that might happen. Um, I'm, I'm not actually sure. Um, so, it, so, yeah, I think it does, it, it does tend to, if you let it stand, it does tend to get a bit uh, um, like harder, the texture. So, you know, probably the best thing to do is actually have it fresh. Um, and what we actually did is we did a bit of a test, uh, a, a trial to see how, uh, so what I did is, I, as I said, it was only the second time I made it. So the first time I did it as a test uh, uh, test run, and what I did is I actually froze a batch of, of gulab jamba just to see, you know, how it's going to be if it's, if it's frozen. And then what we did is we set up that the following week. Um, and I could definitely see the difference in the texture. So you can do that if you want, but I think the, the best thing is make it on the day and serve it on the day. You know, that's that's just the best way to have it. It does tend to keep, pull a bit stuff afterwards, yeah. Yeah, I suppose that is probably true with most things that you make it's best eaten fresh, but sometimes when, you know, you're in a bit of a pickle, then I suppose you could do that, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, then, oh, I saw a comment earlier also um, with regards to the syrup that, uh, because you mentioned about diabetics should uh, possibly avoid, yes. but someone had mentioned about using xylitol um, as a syrup to, to make your syrup base. I suppose you, one could try that as well. You could, I mean, I, I suppose you could use it if you, if you, I haven't, I haven't tasted it myself, so I'm not going to be sure of the result, but I mean, you know, no harm in trying. Maybe just make on a little bit of syrup and try it that, that way. Um, I remember my granny was diabetic and she used to just have it plain as well. So, you know, but yeah, you could probably try it with, with xylitol as well. And I think there was a comment about the shapes as well. If you could make the round shapes, you definitely can. Um, 
just be aware that it might, um, when you're frying it, it it's not going to be frying the same way as the elongated shape. It might take a bit longer to fry if it's round. But so possibly um, at a slightly, slightly lower heat then, I suppose. Yeah, you can fry it, okay. yeah. yeah. Sudaya uh, Kade has also asked how long does it stay fresh, but I think you've answered that uh, about a week, I suppose, if I suppose you keep it in a tight container as well. Um, I suppose all of those things add or play a role. Yeah, if it, if it lasts a week in, in our house, it Absolutely. literally lasts a week. Absolutely. Um, I was also mentioning to my co-host, um, Uncle Atta, that my mom also some, you know, if she's got time and she does some colored coconut as well. And that makes it look very festive, I suppose, if you're doing it for engagement parcels and so on. Um, if you're sending a plate, then that can yeah, make it look um, quite enchanting. Yeah. Um, um, and uh, I mean, as I said, I, I think we, we're in the same position, Rabia, like, uh, you know, until... The two, two times that I tried this before my mommy always used to make it for us. So, um, I, I, you know, I think people must just, you know, don't don't be um, overwhelmed by this. It's, you know, I think it's actually very really easy. I think it's just, you know, a lot of people struggle when it comes to the shapes. I know Ziza was, was there and she was trying to do the shapes as well. And, you know, my mom kept on telling it's it's not right, it's wrong and whatever. But you know what? As long as it tastes good, it doesn't matter if it's a round shape or, you know, if you're not getting it right, I think you must just go ahead and try it. It's, it's really not that, that difficult to make. Yeah, I suppose our moms also started somewhere. I'm sure these shapes weren't perfect, and over the years they perfected it. <laughs> so we shouldn't feel inadequate. <laughs> Definitely. And you pop it yeah, in the mouth, no, it's going to Yeah, Asha, I think it's just admirable, that especially um, something like a gulab jamun, as you said, that's uh, you know, traditionally it was uh, only like certain people who, who made it. And it's nice to know that, uh, you know, the younger people, and some of us are still trying those um, uh, those type of uh, recipes or items. Mm. So next you're going to have to do sutafeni and so on as well. So that's <laughs> make it a bit more challenging. Yeah. That was, that's going into the big leagues now. Eh? I'm not sure if I'm ready for that yet. <laughs> you can prepare for next year. Start practicing now. Yeah, you must explore. <laughs> Um, actually, there's one more question. Um, the Fazana asks, if you were add, to add some rose water to your syrup mixture, how much would you add? Any idea? Um, I'll be honest, Fazana, we actually don't, even though you're supposed to have the rose syrup, we, we don't, we prefer it without the rose syrup, so we don't really add it. Um, but I mean, you can just Google a few recipes and see, um, I suppose it probably would be a teaspoon or, or thereabouts um, that you could add uh, to, to the syrup. Um, I'm not exactly sure because we actually prefer it without the, the, the rose water. So we like it just the normal syrup. Here's another question. Oh, I was somebody asking about gluten-free options. Gluten-free, <laughs> yes, yes. I wish there was because I'm also actually, I can't have gluten. So for me, it's a real struggle um, because now I can't have any of it. Um, if I do find out, I'll, I'll definitely let you guys know. <laughs> I'm also still looking for gluten-free option. Yeah, please post it up on your Instagram. Um, I'm sure people would actually be watching that. So again, your Instagram handle is Aisha underscore foodie underscore mom. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Sorry, and there was a comment from Aziza about whether I made this for my husband. Well, he did have to eat from it. So, uh, you know, he shouldn't complain. He definitely got to have from this, uh, even though it was a couple of weeks ago when we, when we did the, the actual recording. <laughs> I'm sure your family enjoyed it. Yes, they did. Shukran so much, Aisha. Um, I'm sure if there's any other questions, uh, you can possibly just follow that on the chat. Um, we really appreciate you taking your time and um, allowing us in your space um, and showing us this video. It really makes it seem so easy. I'm sure there's going to be loads more people trying it. Shukran again. Have fun. Okay, assalamualaikum. Waalaikum salam. Okay, we'll be now, we'll now be moving on to our next video. Um, that will be Crayfish Curry by Zahra Bandeke, Roika, as well as Firzin Bandeke. Um, Zahra Bandeke, Roika is a co-founder of Slice and Dice Cooking Classes. She hopes to instill the love of cooking and baking, which she learned from her mom, Shaima Bandeke, into her two girls. 
Um, Fritzin van Dikke is also the co-founder of Slice and Dice Cooking Classes. She is currently pursuing a degree in IT. She loves cooking and waking up the storm in the kitchen, recreating her mom's recipes. Um, so we will move to that video now. Also, just a reminder again the, of the competition. So we would like to interaction on the chat. Uh, please comment, please chat. We appreciate all of it. And remember that the competition is based on last week's and this week's um, programs. So remember as much as possible um, with regards to the details so that you're able to be eligible to win the prize. Thank you. I'm Pirzin and I'm Zahra and we're from Slice and Dice Cooking Classes. Today we'll be making crepe fish curry and this recipe is by our late mother Shahima Bandika and we dedicate this cook along to her. And for this recipe we'll be using 1 kilo of crepe fish tails. You can use 3 whole crepe fish that has been cleaned and disjointed but today we're going with the 1 kilo of clean crepe fish tails and 3 whole tomatoes. 3 onions, we're using 1 tablespoon of oil and 1 teaspoon of butter, 2 teaspoons of fresh garlic paste, a pinch of curry leaves, 2 teaspoons of kuljana, 1 teaspoon of jeera, 1 teaspoon of cumin, we're using half a teaspoon crushed chilies or, or fish masala, and we'll be using 1 teaspoon of chili powder, we're using 3 level teaspoons of salt, a half a teaspoon black pepper along with three whole allspice, three cloves and three peppercorns, one dessert spoon mustard seeds and two level teaspoons of turmeric. First we'll start off by braising our onions on a medium heat. We'll take our three chopped onions and our tablespoon of oil and one teaspoon of butter. Now the onions are in the pot and we have to add a little bit of water each time so that the onions doesn't burn. While the onions are braising, we're going to liquidize our three tomatoes. We liquidizing it to a smooth consistency. So our onions has been nicely braised to a golden brown color, and we're going to quickly put it in the food processor to give it a smooth, to give the curry a smoother texture. Oh, 
So now that our onions has reached a nice golden brown color and it's smooth in texture, we're gonna go ahead and add in all of our spices. in our spices we want to give it a good mix until it's well combined we're going to allow these the onions and the spices some time to braise so our spices are now braised with the onions and the aromatic is smelling very really nice and we brought our little food critic in to to give you the proof how does it smell <laughs> Nice. <laughs> mm. Okay, so now we'll be adding our tomatoes and we liquidize the tomatoes so that um, it will break down easier while it's cooking. And we'll add our garlic paste in there. <laughs> so let's look at our curry. We can see at this point the pot has been braising for about 10 minutes and it's bubbling away. We can see that the tomatoes and the spices are well cooked through. So now we know that it's time to add our crayfish. So we can go ahead and add in our uh, crayfish tails. And we're going to give it a nice mix. So we're going to allow this pot to cook for another 10 minutes until we see that the shells of the crayfish has turned bright red and the meat has turned white. So let's have a look at our curry. So we can see that the shells of the crayfish is bright red and the meat has turned white. So now our curry is ready to serve. So our crayfish curry is done and we serve it with some white rice and taste cauliflower. Thank you for joining us and we hope you enjoy recreating this recipe at home. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Shukran to Zahra and Fazin. That was an amazing video. Well done. Um, you made something quite complicated looked very uncomplicated and easy. We'll just be waiting for them to join us, um, to check if they're joining us, to answer any questions, or queries, or comments. Oh, here they are. Mm -hmm. Assalamu alaikum, ladies. Wa alaikum salam. That was an amazing video. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, a question that I have is, was this your first attempt? Um, have you practiced before? Because um, I don't think <laughs> I look so comfortable making it. Can you tell us a bit more about how you learned it, the recipe, where it comes from, and um, yeah, what made you decide to do it? Um, something that I wouldn't easily try. <laughs> Maybe, Rabia, before they answer, um, I can just add uh, knowing the family very well. Uh, their mother was a, a, a wonderful chef, uh, um, you know, really, really top notch. Um, she could just about make every dish you can think of. Uh, she was a very warm, friendly person as well. And her cooking was really, really top notch. And what I've seen here now is really an extension of their mom. Um, your mom set very, very high standards. And I can see the influence is rubbing off on that. And uh, she would be very proud of you guys. So well done. Just from what I've seen, it's fantastic. Thank you, Uncle <laughs> yeah. um, So are you able and to tell us a bit more about this recipe? Yes, um, so crayfish curry is something that um, our mother cooked very often um, at home. It was like a weekly thing. And um, it's something that everyone in our family enjoys. So that's why we decided to share this recipe. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, I've got a question um, and it says, uh, the question asks, can I add cream or coconut milk to this dish? And if so, how many molds? So I suppose um, an, an, an estimate, if you can. Well, we never really add um, coconut cream or so to our crayfish curry. But if you want to, then I'm sure about 250 molds will be fine. Um, yes, it, it's because from what I gathered from your recipe, it seems to be a tomato-based um, yeah. type of curry. Um, yeah. But yes, I think it does make sense about, I suppose, 125 to 250 mils could work. Um, I suppose yeah. you could also adjust it to taste. Um, yeah. Yes, so you said your family really enjoys it. They are really lucky to have you. Um, <laughs> and especially, at, yes, uh, Zahra who mentions that you'd like to instill this, um, this love for cooking into your girls as well. I'm sure the same way your mother has instilled it in you. It's really admirable, like Uncle Atta has said. Thank you so much. I'm just waiting to see if there's any more comments. Um, Mr. Kant says, well done to the girls. So that would be the two of you. Um, yes, everybody's commenting on, looks so good. Um, yes, and that your mom would be so proud. Um, yeah. Anything else you'd like to add? I just wanted to say that obviously like the crayfish curry, um, you, you can have it with your rice or roti, I'm sure. So uh, the texture or the, or the gravy is maybe not too thick, not too thin. So it goes equally well with both rice and roti. Yes, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, like uh, for me, um, it's uh, it's all about the eating side. I haven't ventured into cooking, as I say, and I'll I'll I'll, I'll translate this for you. To me, tayari kara shikela, ani mi tayari kara That means so everybody out there, you learn uh, you, uh, how to to cook and so on, and I'm just going to be the one that's going to be eating. So. You know, everybody yeah. Sure. yeah, so I may sound very clear, I'll ask lots of questions, but uh, I'm not really a cook, yeah. <laughs> but thanks, uh, that, that was very really nice. Uh, it's really a good crayfish, a popular dish uh, with our community, and I think yeah, you guys have done well there. Thank you. Thank you. Shukran again, ladies. Thank you again so much for availing yourself, um, for allowing us into your home and observing what you do and uh, for joining us today to take these comments and questions. Um, we really appreciate your time. Thank you. Shukran so much.
All right, we will now be moving on to the next video. We have chicken akli, um, and that's prepared by Zaida Sane. Um, she's a legal advisor and a self-taught chef, mm -hmm. as well as a busy entrepreneur who is living her passion. She will be uh, presenting her video on chicken acne. So that is quite a popular dish as well. Um, I'm looking forward to watching that.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm Zaida Sunday. Welcome back to the second edition of the Janjira Absani Kukulong. I hope you can enjoy this um, episode. We're going to make an easy chicken acne today. So let's start with the ingredients. So we're using my own brand of spices. Um, it's all about spice. So we're going to use some chili powder, uh, fennel, but a lot of people don't know the, um, what fennel actually is, it's actually barisha. Coriander powder, which is guljana. Chiro or chira, cumin powder. I'm going to use some turmeric, which is body, and some biryani masala. Those are spices. We're going to use some stick cinnamon, ilachi pods, and some what do you call this? Nalchis, I think. <laughs> and then we're going to use some saffron, grated tomato. Oops. Okay, don't ask me why my ginger and garlic turns this color. It's actually very pure. It's pure ginger, pure garlic. It just turns this color all the time. I tried using vinegar, salt. It just still changes that color. Salt, some curry leaves. This is for later. And then I parboiled some lentils my mom used to use lentils in her acne and some parboiled potatoes we have our onions and i'm using fillet chicken because my family only eats fillet you can use portions this is about 600 grams fillet cubed and then we have some yogurt i like using double cream and i'm going to use some buttermilk also okay so now we're going to start um i put on the pot and i'm going to add the oil. So we're going to use about two tablespoons of oil and we're going to use some butter. Okay so before we add the onion I'm going to just add some stick cinnamon, some cardamom pods, that. I'm just going to allow it to get warm. I know we all have our own um, methods and ways, but my mom always said that lots of onions makes a good acne. So this is about two medium onions. I'm going to use it for 600 grams of chicken fillets. Okay, so the onions need to be soft and like a light brown. Um, the onions actually also give the acne a good color, like biryani for instance. So we are going to fry it till soft. Okay. okay, so now onions are ready. We're going to add our spices. We're going to start with our ginger and garlic. We're going to use two teaspoons. And then we're going to start with the parisha. Oh, I'm going to use a teaspoon and a half. That looks like more. And just more than a teaspoon. It's like okay. a whole spoon. Then we're going to make it spicy. Anya doesn't like spicy food. Anya's a bland girl. I have to cook yeah. separate for Anya. Coriander, two teaspoons. Okay, so I don't put in a lot of jeera. Um, a lot of people complain that they get a lot of bobs when they eat acne. So I actually think it's the jeera that causes the bobs. <laughs> so I just use less. And then I'm going to use some turmeric to give it some color. You can't see the color yet because we're going to add the tomato and then the yogurt and then we'll judge with the spices. The biryani masala is actually optional. So we're just going to use a, like a half a teaspoon of it. So we're going to use a cup of grated tomato. You can liquidize your tomato also. So, okay, then I have, I'm going to add the soaked um, saffron. I soaked it in some boiling water. You, I don't like to soak it in milk. Um, I like, I just like to do it in the water. Okay, so you can actually see the color and the smell. It doesn't smell like acne. It doesn't. It doesn't. 
Okay, so I'm going to use some buttermilk. Like a half a cup of that. And I'm just judging now. And half a cup of double cream yogurt. Um, at this stage, you can add more spices if you want it more spicier. I think I'm going to add a little, a little more pretty ship, a little more of chili powder, I think a little turmeric. And just a little coriander powder. Wow. Chicken acne is actually very quick and easy. Um, if you parboil your rice, parboil your potatoes and just make your masala on. It's very quick and easy, especially for working moms. So I'm just going to adjust the heat and let this cook for about 10 minutes. And then we're going to add our chicken and our rice and mm. then we'll be ready. Okay, so now our onions and our masala and our yogurt is ready. Okay, these are cubed full of chicken. You can use portions. Yes, we are a very picky family. I'm going to just give this a quick cook for like five minutes before I add the rest of the ingredients. I parboiled some potatoes. It's just easier because we're using fillets but it's quick so I'm going to add some potatoes and I'm going to add some parboiled lentils my mommy's way I'm taking three cups of rice I never parboiled it today because a lot of people struggle with making acne with normal rice. So I'm just going to add it. So as you can see now, we don't, we have liquid in the pot from the masalas and the yogurt and tomato and the onion. With acne also, we tend not to mix too much because the rice can break. So I'm just going to give it a quick stir and just check please taste for salt at this stage now and whatever you want to add like chilies and things because once we add more liquid to it it's going to steam and we're not going to open the pot again now <laughs> So now we're going to add some boiling water. Okay, so now we added some water so that it can cook the rice. So as you can see, we have enough liquid to cook the rice. Okay, so I'm going to just let it cook for say 8 minutes and then I'm going to check on it and then we're going to let it steam. I like to add coriander to everything. <laughs> so I'm gonna add you see it looks it looks very nice. It's coming right. Okay, so we're just gonna let that cook for a while and then we're gonna come back to that. <laughs> I'm just going to give this a quick stir. You can see the rice is starting to cook. At this stage, you can add some chilies to it. And I think there's enough liquid in here. So now I'm going to take some greased paper. I'm going to fold it and then I'm just going to pop it down like this. And then I'm going to take some foil. I'm going to close the pot. And I'm going to leave this now for like 20 minutes on like a low heat. 
Here we go. And then you just leave your acne to do its thing. A lot of people these days, they actually put it in their wonder bag. I don't have one yet. I think I must get one to test it out. So we'll just let the acne um, simmer and steam. In the meantime, I'm going to show you how to make a quick day and a quick kuchumber to go with this. Okay, so now we're going to make some day. Day is made with yogurt. I like double cream because it's so creamy. We're going to use some coriander and we're going to use some red and green chilies. I like red and green chilies because it just looks, the color comes out nice. So easy way, just throw everything in a blender. So I'm going to add some water quickly and I'm just going to um, first grind the chilies. Okay, then we're gonna add some coriander. I'm just gonna add a little buttermilk. It's strong as. Yes. And I'm gonna add some salt. And I'm gonna add some lemon juice, just like a dash. Squirt, yes, a dash. I'm just going to add some jira seeds to it. Okay, so now we're going to make some kuchumbur. Don't you know what kuchumbur is? No clue. No clue? Yo, what kind of Indian are you? No, uh, I think it's just chopped like onion and tomato and cucumber okay so kuchumber my mommy used to make kuchumber she used to grate um a tomato and she used to add some sliced onion and she used to cook it i'm going to show you now with the salt i have a question yes what's the question do um, do these onions make you cry yeah they do Sound. They say you must, you must, they say you must chew bubble gum when your eye, <laughs> eyes want you. <laughs> My mommy used to take the onion, add it to a bowl, and she used to add salt. Salt to her onions. And she used to add lemon juice, and she yeah. used to squeeze it, and she used to say, She's couscousing the stuff, the onions now. <laughs> you know, couscous the onions. Yeah. What I like to do is I like to add a little sugar to this. Sugar. So I'm gonna just grab some sugar quickly. I'm just gonna add a little sugar. Okay. Thank you. I'm gonna add some cucumber. So I'm using some um, cherry tomatoes. It's nice and sweet. Makes a nice cucumber. So now I'm gonna add some coriander, some tanya to it. Just gonna mix it. Okay, so now we're just going to check on our acne. You can see the steam is coming up. And it's just, I'm just going to lift the rice from the bottom like this. Try not to break the rice. It's almost there. It's actually looking very nice. So I'm just going to give this another few minutes and then we're going to plate up. Okay, 
Okay, so now we, this is our chicken acne. So, <laughs> looks nice, no? I wanna eat it. You wanna eat it? <laughs> and this is the one with, we had put some yeah. day on, and there was some mixed veg and our kachumbur. Okay, she's a fussy child, so if she sees it's nice, then it has to be nice. So, how does it taste? Nice. Nice, okay. Okay, so you want another? Another one. Okay. I'm not a baby. You're not a baby, you're my baby. <laughs> okay, so that's our easy chicken acne. I hope you can try the recipe and please let me know how it comes. Thank you so much for joining us for the Janjira Apsa Nikukulong. Thank you. Bye. Now can we eat? Yeah, this is good.
Right. Um, once again, Assalamu alaikum. If you've just uh, joined us and uh, we've had um, two of our wonderful dishes already. We started off with something sweet, the gulab jamun, which is very interesting and very intriguing. And that was followed by uh, chicken acne, of course, by uh, Zaida. That was quite a delight to see. Um, excuse the pun there. Of course, uh, just a, a uh, summary of uh, some of uh, Janjira Afsani Educational and Social Society, or just as we know it, some of the initiatives or activities that we do. And uh, of course, um, you know, we invite everybody across the spectrum to join us in furthering our initiatives. We're running for more than 100 years. Um, at, our, at its very heart is the Bursary Fund, which is the flagship project and uh, we've assisted many, many students. In fact, since 1994, over 600 students have been assisted. And uh, a lot of those students come back to the society and then put back something in for the community as well. And that's what we encourage. We need the youngsters to come on board um, and, uh, and play a key role in the society and take it forward for another century and more. Of course, we also do the uh, food parcel program each year, um, which we try and, and not just uh, concentrate on in Ramadan, but also at other times as well, because there's always a concentration in Ramadan. And uh, we, um, we help a lot uh, of people in the community. We go to different places, of course. Uh, just this year, we distributed over 2,000 food parcels um, as well, so it was quite quite. A, it's it's become a bigger and bigger project. I think initially we did about 40 parcels, and that's grown to over 2,000 now. We also established the COVID fund, uh, of course, um, to help those families who, due to the um, burden uh, posed by COVID, of course, and uh, then we assist those families in particular circumstances. <clears throat> we also have the annual NARS program. Uh, which is um, one of the activities to continue um, the, uh, our cultural initiatives. Um, obviously, with COVID, we couldn't, but we normally have the massive thought program as well. Um, the one thing I must impress upon is the fact that all the funds that we receive, we distribute 100%. Um, there is no set of or, or, or charge for salaries, admin fees, uh, or the like. Um, we all uh, do our efforts voluntarily and uh, there is no charges at all for salaries or anything like that. All the expenses are either accounted for personally or the, by the society, but um, we distribute 100% of the funds. So rest assured that, um, you know, when, when we receive your money that is distributed in the right manner and also 100% as well. It's just touching on, 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 on some of the initiatives. As I said, we'd like more people to come on board um, to either help with the activities and also financially uh, too. Um, we've had the 1 million rand bursary project and um, we're proud to say that we increasingly, of course, assisting more students, but as we know, the demands are getting greater as well. So there's never enough funding um, at hand. There's always a greater need. So uh, we would welcome any donations that you could make to the society, of course, as well. So thank you there. Yeah, that's just to give you a bit of a summary of uh, uh, the society. And we're going over 100 years. Be part of us for the next 100 years as well. Thank you. Shukran, um, We will now go over to Zahida. I hope she's on. Saida, are you joining? Are you able to join us? I'm sorry, I look a mess. <laughs> I'm not looking all glamorous today. <laughs> not a problem. So, we understand you're busy. Thank you so much so I'm for coming to us it now. Here. No problem. Always. I'm able just to go. I'm sorry, it's very. Um... Okay, no, it's fine. So, do you were saying? Yeah, I'm saying the Janjira app, Sani, has always been special because back in the days I was also part of 
they use Kamati and we had a lot of fun back in the day. So my contribution anytime. We really appreciate Sada. Thank you so much for your time again. Um, I see that you have answered some of the questions in the comments. Uh, one of the questions I had was um, the amount of onions that you used. Is there a specific reason for the amount that you had used? It seemed quite a bit. I think the, the amount of onions, I think, just makes the acne. Um, my mom would always say that you need a lot of onions. So I just add more onions to my acne to give that sauce. Because people generally sometimes think it's the spices that actually give a sauce, but it's not the spices. It's actually the onion. And I know too much onion is also not good for your food also. Um, so... I did share the recipe, um, so they should just go according to the recipe um, and they should make a flop proof acne because a lot of people have made it and they haven't, it hasn't flopped. There are also comments about the rice and water um, approximations. Um, how to judge how much water to use for your rice to get the right consistency. Okay, so your, your your masala needs to be saucy. It needs to be um, a curry, almost like a curry for you to add your rice. So your rice needs to cook into that curry. If there is no curry, then you're going to have a problem because the rice won't be able to cook and steam. So a lot of people, if they're trying to make acne for the first time, I think they need to parboil your rice. I think that's the safest way because then you just cook your curry a bit dry and you add your rice and you just put your butter on top and you just steam. I think that is the easiest way with acne if you're a starter. But if you can cook and you know how to judge with the curry and the rice, then you can throw in the raw rice. I don't see a difference in it. A lot of people say that acne should be cooked with raw rice. It's tastier, but I... I mean, I work all day sometimes, and when I'm in a hurry, I just pop all my rice and I add it all together, and it tastes the same. And since most of us are in a rush today, anyway, oh, I think yes. that's the way We're to juggling go. too many things. <laughs> Absolutely. There's a comment from Aisha Abdullah who says that um, she finds the water content tricky, and if there's too much moisture, she, uh, you can put a slice of bread on top to absorb the extra yes. of the water. Um, I've never heard of that, but that sounds um, it sounds like it can work, actually. It makes sense. Or, or another tip is you can just open the lid and let it cook and let the water uh, dry up like that. That's what I generally do if I find that the water is too much. So you just, you know, let it dry out like that. Mm. Look, That's acne awesome. is a trick, um, but once you just know, then it's the easiest thing to actually make for your family. Especially if you have a long day and you actually want to have a good meal at night. Like my um, my my daughter loves acne. My son's not really an acne fan. He likes biryani. So yeah, I think you must try it. And um, you know, if it works, it works. And with practice, you have to practice. You can't just become a master chef overnight. No, <laughs> definitely. Like I said before, our mothers were also the same. They also try. <laughs> they got it right eventually. <laughs> Yes. Um, oh, just one more thing. Um, could you just remind us about your Instagram handle? Because, um, yeah, you've got quite a few, um, you know, you've got many good recipes on there. Yes. So my All About um, Food page, we have two pages now. Um, I am in the process of branding my, my personal page, um, but it's All About Food 16 where you find all the recipes and the inspirational posts and my journey to where I am right now. And then we have our All About Food shop where you can buy our delicious freezer meals, our homemade meals, um, freshly made meals Monday to Friday. We stock our spices, our sauces. Um, it's, we're very popular for our roasted chili paste, which is all made um, at All About Food. And as you can see, we're busy with the corporate um, order this morning and um, our kitchen is very busy so um, you can follow our page all about food 16 on Instagram and on Facebook and you can shop online www.aafood.co.za and we have a whatsapp order line that is 076 
and yeah that's about it i don't know <laughs> That sounds like I'm just watching some more comments here. Um, the, the, the comment is about the butter content. Um, the person says that her mother in law, he's her mother in law, said the more butter makes it more moist. Is that, is that correct in your experience? Yes, as well? actually, when you fry your onions in your butter and your oil, it actually gives your, um, your acne a bit of moisture. A lot of times people use too much oil and, and, and butter and you'll have a lot of, um, you'll, the rice will be greasy, man. I don't know if you see sometimes at functions, the acne is quite greasy because there's too much oil or butter in the. I'm not someone that likes a lot of um, oil and butter. I actually cook a lot with just butter. Even in our food store, I cook generally a lot with butter than oil. I just like that. Um, too much oil will make your acne or any dish um, oily. It will make your chicken curry oily, your meat curry oily. But I always say a little extra um, oil in your fish curry is important. Because when you're making fish curry, you need that layer of a bit of oil. Then you know you've perfected the, the perfect fish curry. I think that's a cookney style, I think. <laughs> Thank you, Zaina. Um, yes, yeah, so yeah, the comic is you must get the butter amount right. I suppose, like with anything, it comes with trial and error and with practice. Yes. Um, so yeah, shukran so much again, Zaida, for your time. We can see no how busy you are. Really appreciate Thank you it. so much. And we'd love to see you again soon. <laughs> Inshallah, I mean, Thank you. Okay, assalamu alaikum. I'm fine. We're dying, guys. All right, everyone, just a reminder that um, about the competition, um, and we have some wonderful prizes up for grabs. Um, we will be posting the questions, and the correct answers should be posted in the chat, and we will be making our selection for winner from there. The district cafe voucher would be for the person that's the most interactive on the chat, so get those comments going. Uh, we love seeing them come through. We will now be moving on to our next video. We will be having Dalby. So Dalby is a benjil and bean curry and it's made by Aisha Parker and Rafika Mahate. Aisha Parker is currently pursuing a master's degree in environmental law. She's an entrepreneur and she describes herself as finding comfort in the kitchen and she's at ease in an apron. Um, she's also upskilling her culinary passions one Indian dish at a time. The Fika Mahate is an avid baker and she can make your cake dreams a reality with opulent cakes for any occasion. We will be proceeding to that video now. My name is Aisha and this is my banner, Rafika. Um, today we will be preparing an Indian dish. Um, this dish is known as Dalbi. I think the name varies from village to village. We, are, we were actually fortunate enough to be taught a variety of Indian dishes and this is one of the many dishes that my mother taught uh, both of us. Um, so when preparing this dish, uh, it's made of beans and brinjal, that's uh, the main ingredients of it. But 
there are different beans that can be used. So we use something known as karua beans. But you get powder, this is karua and this is butter beans. So you can use any of the beans to make this dish. You can also, um, if you are running short of time, use a tin of butter beans. Um, it will just make it more convenient and then it will just reduce your cooking time as well. To make this dish, you'll need some fresh curry leaves, chilies and fresh dania. You'll need about two cups of karwa beans. So this beans, it's best to soak it the whole day before and then clean it the next day. And if you're using a bigger bean, like a butter bean, you can take more beans. So not two cups, about two and a half. And then you need um, two medium tomatoes, two brindles cut up in chunks according to your preference, one large onions uh, cut thinly, um, two tablespoons of garlic paste, two heap tablespoons of super fine coconut, and then you'll need for the spices, you'll need two teaspoons of chili powder, one teaspoon of turmeric and one and a half generous teaspoons of kolchana which is also known as coriander powder. Um, so we soak it in cold water and this means also you can soak and clean like a lot at a time and freeze it and then use it as you need. We will begin cooking now. I will start with braising the onions and I'm going to roast the coconut and the Okay, now I'm going to toast the coconut and then I'll be adding the kojana powder to the coconut. It's just going to get a light um, tint, not really roasted. Um, and then we will add this to the liquidizer. Once your oil is heated up, take one chili and slit it right through. Don't throw away the seeds. So you can hear that sizzle. And you can add a few curry leaves as well, like three or four. So you just give it a quick fry and then you can throw in your onion. So you want your onion to be translucent. You don't want to make it too brown. So while the onions are braising, we're going to prepare the liquidized mixture. So in the liquidized mixture, we will put two and a half cups of water, the tomatoes, the fine garlic or lesson as we know it, and the turmeric and chili powder, and the roasted coconut and colchana mixture. Let's have a look at the mixture. And this is how the mixture must look. Nice and smooth. So once the onions are ready, we're going to add in our blended mixture. And we're going to let this cook for about 5 minutes on medium to high heat with a lid on before we add in the beans. So once that is boiled for about like five minutes, we're going to add the beans, Bana, the beans. And then this will cook for another 15 minutes before we add the brinjal in, also on a medium to high um, heat, so that the beans can cook soft 
but not too soft. We just want it to cook a little bit before we add the brinjal. Uh, let's have a look at the beans. So the beans are semi-soft now, so we'll add in the brinjal. Fana, can you organize the brinjal, please? Thank you. So we'll throw in the brinjal. And we'll also add the chopped dania. So you can just give it a good stir. And then, um, as you can see, it's like it's a little bit dry now because the curry is cooked. So we'll also add in a little bit of boiling water. And then lastly, we'll add about a teaspoon of coarse salt. So if you're using fine salt, it will be less. But this is one teaspoon of coarse salt. And we'll let that cook until the brinjal is soft according to your preference. Fana, come check here. I think it's done. It's perfect now. Okay, so we're ready to plate. Thank you, lunch is served. We hope you enjoy cooking this meal at the oven bar. And I'm sure we'll enjoy it, eating it as well. Oh, let's see how it smells. Oh, that was wrong. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Shukran Aisha and Rafika, that was a lovely video. Um, I'm just waiting for them to join so they're able to answer the questions that we have. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Wa alaikum ladies. Thank you for joining us. Your video was lovely. We've got some um, questions and comments. Yes. But I just wanted to say one of the comments that are standing out to me is lovely, um, love the plating. I just want to say that that is not how you eat dalby at all. <laughs> it, it looks nothing like that when you dish your plate of food. <laughs> um, all right. So, okay. The question is, can you substitute fresh beans with canned beans? Yes, you can. I did mention it in the video. Um, so you can use um, a tin of butter beans. You can just rinse it and then use the beans in the in the dalby. And it, that obviously um, helps with making the cooking time shorter, shorter as well. Yeah, of course. Um, someone's also asking about the English names of the first bean used. <laughs> we have <laughs> absolutely no, no idea. idea. From the time so we were uh, all we puzzled, <laughs> we were trying to yes. figure it out. Actually, on that is day as well. Obtainable, yeah, maybe is it a bean that you only get at your specialities by shops or where do, where do you source it? So, actually, those beans have come from India, like you know, like when the family goes on their trips and then they come yeah. over the beans <laughs> in their suitcase. <laughs> so, it's, it's one of those, but you can get them, I think, at that shop um, next to Arshad's Chicken Tikka. There's like a little Indian shop and they do sell um, those beans. But I'm also sure that you'll find them in like any yes. Indian shop here. Yeah. I just don't know if the name differs. That's the only um, thing. Thank you for that. Um, let's see. Oh, they're saying that the cooking demos look really easy. Thank you for sharing. 
Um, I think there I was mean, one more question. Yes, about the, the brain gel. We yes, the brain gel. It. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So um, we don't solve um, the brain gel, but I I think that's like a personal preference if you feel that you want to solve the brain gel. I know sometimes people say when you cook things like um, brain gel or marrow, the salt doesn't tend to take. So um, I think it's a personal preference. Yes, I've seen recipes as well where you salt the brain gel before and then you dab it with um, towering paper to remove the, yes. um, the bitter juices. So I suppose yes. that was what the question was alluding to. Yeah. Um, but like you said, it, I suppose either way can work. Um, Aisha Abdullah is going to Google the bean name for us. We'll wait for your response and what you find, Aisha. Um, oh, um, Sudaya Kade is asking the Indian name. Um, could you mention it again, please, of that bean? Um, it's called uh, Dalbi. Oh, of the, the bean, bean, sorry, Kurua bean. bean. Kurua bean, yeah. Yes. So I, I don't know if you could okay. like see the video properly. We actually did a close up. So there was Kerua beans and some people use powder, which is also an Indian bean. Um, that's the white one. I guess, the white one. So it's Kerua so can... and powder. Yes. Okay, great. We can do some investigation into that in the meantime. Yes. Or go to the Indian stores and just ask for it. <laughs> I see someone just said that powder is butter, so I'm not too sure. We've never used um, powder in uh, Dalby. Okay. We just used curva bean. Okay, so you can omit it actually. Yes. Okay. So it seems like those beans are interchangeable. You can use butter beans if you don't want to use any of those Indian beans as well. Am I correct? Yes. yes. So okay. you actually use one bean. We don't use all three. We just okay. use one, um, whichever one you want to use. Okay. So if you're in a rush, always like me, then it's going to be the can of beans <laughs> and, and just chuck in. <laughs> Thanks so much for that, ladies. I'm just checking for this. Any further comments? Mm, it doesn't seem that way. Okay, so I think that's it. Thank you so much for Thank you. availing yourselves to answer the questions. Thank you so much for taking part in this video production. We really appreciate it and hope that you can join us again when we endeavor this initiative again. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you so Thank much you. for having us. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Okay, so everyone, just a reminder again that um, we'll be um, we'll be posting that we'll be um, telling you what the questions are for the competition. Um, and then we'll be mentioning the, the winners after the vote of thanks. So um, oh, I see the comment here from Aisha. Okay, so <laughs> next time with Rafika, yes, I agree with that. Rafika, who's the avid baker, is going to bake something for us. Um, I'm just going to get the questions. Maybe while uh, <laughs> Rabia is going to get the questions, uh... I just wanted to say, um, I mean, it's, it's fantastic to look at all these beautiful recipes and, and how it's made. And uh, there's a saying that goes, which says, Dani, Dani Pelikahe, Khane Wale Kana, which means on every grain of rice is written the name of the person that's going to eat it. And uh, maybe just a few lines, uh, you know, uh, good food is like music to my ears. So uh, I'm going to just sing a few lines and say, May to raste pe, may to raste se ja raha ta, may to bel puri kha raha ta, may to larki guma raha ta, raste se ja raha ta, bel puri kha raha ta, larki guma raha ta. Tujko mirchi lagi to me kya karu, Tujko mirchi lagi to me kya karu. It's about the guy who was walking down the road and of course he, he uh, ate bail puri and so on uh, with this girl and down the road. And um, then of course, and, and he said, look, what do I do if you bit on the chili and so on? So it's all humorous. Um, you know, a nice song sung by, um, uh, by Kumar Sanu, of course, yeah. Okay, Ravia, you can wrap up. Thank you so much for that lovely rendition. Um, I'm just going to quickly mention what the, um, the main prize with two, with over 2,000 rand is. 
um, a selection of amazing goodies. Um, firstly, we have a personalized chopping board from Crystal Boutique. We've got a Tudor and Cashew hamper from Inspired by Mom, a voucher from Gourmet Popcorn Empire, a voucher from Picadicious Cakes, a Cinnabon tea cake from Mariam K. Mauser, Crunchy Ribbons and Crave, um, and I think that's a voucher as well from Exotic Cuisine Cape Town, Chocolate Baklava from the Traditional Spoon, Freezer and Meals, Spices and Freezer and Meals from All About Food 16, and Butter Biscuits from Baking with Ray. So that sounds amazing, I wish you could take part. So the questions are, what did Yasin do to give his butter chicken a smoky flavor? Number two, how long should the gulab jamun mixture rest? Number three, what did Firzin and Zahra do to the onion mixture to make the crayfish curry smooth? Please post your answers in, in the chat box. The questions again, what did Yasin do to give his butter chicken a smoky flavor? How long should the gulab jamun mixture rest? What did Firzin and Zahra do to the onion mixture to make the crayfish curry smooth? In the meantime, while we're waiting for the answers, we're going to go over to the vote of thanks and Asya Aliko will be rendering the vote of thanks. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Asya Aliko, a proud supporter of the Jamjira Hafsani Society, and I will be doing the vote of thanks. Our first and foremost thanks is to the Almighty Allah for granting us all to meet virtually and for making this culinary extravaganza possible. On behalf of Jess, we would like to thank our lead sponsor, Kahiso Asset Manager, as well as our other sponsors, Spice City, Damascus, Chikro, Chikro Food Market, Opera Fruit and Veg, District Cafe, Perkham Pharmacy, Carpet City Factory Shop, and La Elegante. Thank you to our wonderful Masters of Ceremony, Shamima Mauza, Rabia Karim, and At Ataullah Sonde for, for, present, for presenting over these last two weekends. With technology, Shamima was able to join us all the way from Abu Dhabi. Thank you to Hafi Sanweed Ahmed Faki for his du'as. The warm welcome today from our chair was much appreciated. We we would also like to thank him for his unwavering support in helping getting this project off the ground. A special thank you to my grandfather, President of Jess, Advocate Mohammed Sali, for his welcome message. Your wisdom and experiences help ensure the success of this society. We appreciate the efforts of our culinary artists who graciously gave up their time to showcase their amazing skills. Thank you for sharing your knowledge, skills, and cooking inspirations and pas passions with us. Without you, this show would not be possible. Lastly, to our online viewers, Jess thanks you for committing your valuable time to us. Thank you for registering, what for watching, and supporting us. We are humble and grateful for your support. Shukran. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, Asya. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, before we proceed to the closing du'a, we've got the winners. So the main prize winner for the, three, the first three correct answers um, will be going to Anissa. Congratulations to Anissa. And the District Cafe voucher for the person that was the most interactive goes to Mr. Khan. Please could I ask that you email info at hapsani.co.za so that you may claim your prizes. We will now move on to the closing du'a, done again by Hafiz Tanweer Ahmed Faki. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد الله عليه وسلم اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام وإليك يعود 
السلام فحينا ربنا بالسلام وأدخلنا دار السلام تبارك ربنا وتعاليك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام سمعنا وطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير اللهم طهم قلوبنا من النفاق وأعمالنا من الرياء وألسنتنا من الكذب وأعيننا من الخيانة فإنك تعلم خائنة الأعين وما تبكي الصدور رب يسر ولا تؤسر رب تمم بالخير وأنت الله الكريم الميسر ربنا وآتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأدخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفر يا رب العالمين اللهم أذهب البس رب الناس اشفي وأنت شافي لا شفاء إلا شفاءك شفاء لا يغادر سقما اللهم اجعل قبرهم روضة من ضياد الجنان ولا تجعل قبرهم حفرة من حفر النيران برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم وأسئلهم في الجنة اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم وأسئلهم في الجنة اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم وأسئلهم في الجنة واحشرهم مع النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين يا أيتها النفس المطمئنة ارجعي إلى ربك راضية موضية فادخلي في عبادي وادخلي جنتي إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله محمد وبارك وسلم دعواهم فيها سبحانك اللهم وتحيتهم فيها سلام وآخر دعواهم أن الحمد لله رب العالمين Zakalak for that tradition. Um, before we end off, we just like to once again thank all our presenters uh, for taking part in this cook cooking show. Um, thank you for agreeing to be part of it, allowing us into your homes. I know lots didn't initially um, agree, but thank you for allowing us to twist your arms. We really enjoyed it. I hope you did too as well. Um, Uncle Atta, is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, yeah, from my side, I think it was, uh, I enjoyed uh, co-presenting it uh, today with Rabia, of course. I enjoyed the dishes, watching it. So I'm certainly going to be expecting a replica at home from the wife. I hope she's been watching it. Um, so um, <laughs> we just add to the variety and, and so on. Uh, and from my side, I hope uh, that you enjoyed it as much as I did presenting it. And uh, it certainly seems so from the interaction that we've had in the chats and the presenters themselves. And uh, I think it's, uh, it says a lot that um, in our community, we have some fantastic talent uh, in the culinary, culinary field, of course. And um, I think it's something that we can certainly continue doing 
going forward. So thank you from my side. Before you leave, we've got a really funny video of all the bloopers that's been collected over the last two weeks. Um, I'd encourage you to watch it, enjoy it, and laugh a bit at ourselves. Shukran so much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Yasin Mauser. I am a patisserie chef and a culinary chef. Um, and today we are going to be making butter chicken that is grilled. It's a grilled butter chicken. Can I do that again? So, without any further ado, let's get started. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tell me you got that. And we'll be using one teaspoon of... This is a red ramen, which you can get... Kit, um, you... Three tablespoons of tandoori spice. Um, sorry, no, that's wrong. Okay. And hopefully I don't whisk it all out of the bowl. <laughs> We're going to use some um, uh, pistachios, badam. Oh, I think we need to retake that one and made a lot of butts there. Um, today we will be preparing an Indian dish. So now your oven, I mean, <clears throat> sorry, we'll start. I was going to say, I should do it later. Okay, cut. Ooh. <laughs> it's daddy. <laughs> so put daddy. And then they don't know who that oh. is. <laughs> That's mommy's sister's husband. <laughs> Don't you eat onions? Oh, onion rings that are crispy. Okay. Okay, come see now. You need to take tips, you know. And then one teaspoon, half a teaspoon of food coloring. Now we're going to film. One, two. put it all there. I'm not taking you with on Sunday to 7.96. Okay, me and Azad made a deal. Okay. I, I be in here, and okay. I go with you. Okay. But you're going to drive crazy. Yeah, it always drives me crazy. <laughs> I didn't know you're taking me also, I thought it was just a can. <laughs> and um, also the way it's made is also, also very different. <laughs> we'll heat up the ghee. Um, can you stop? <laughs> So you gonna have this for supper today? No, not for supper. But I will eat now. Okay. Now. Okay. <laughs> this uncle's gonna take it home. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Um. What am I supposed to say? No, okay, don't bless it too much. Otherwise, it will be. Okay. Cool. <laughs> not to bless your enemies too much. Otherwise, it will be silly. Okay. Yes, I think it. <laughs> Let's check it out. Yeah, it's fine. Did you mix it from the bottom? Yes, I did. I did mix it from the bottom. Yeah, yeah, it's um, First, grind the chilies. <laughs> Mommy? Mommy, which is not a cum? Mommy, for sicker. <laughs> okay. 
Perfect. So we're going to allow this pot to cook for mm. over now. Can okay, we start? And one fell. Two, action. Coriander. And to make it very easy, no, literally, it's strong. I don't like it too dry, so um, yeah. I'll eat, I'll, I'll put the with the rest of, oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't like bubble gum. You don't like anything like to do with bubble gum. Yeah, I did, I did. Okay, man, this is not funny. How do you know? I'm going to film it. Okay, we're going to do it now. I'm cooking now. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm gonna stop saying um, I'm saying um, all day. Uh. Stuff we do because our granny will turn in her grave if we don't do. <laughs> We're just gonna chop it into. Yes? It's not red onion, it's purple onion. I don't know, I call it red onion. Two. You were so quiet looking me. I'm not making the ball. Shut here and you eat him already. I hope you're not putting that in the video. <laughs> and then, then she will just, just come and say, yeah, You sound like this is another level, yo. After stirring and, um, oh no. <laughs> Go. I hope you enjoy recreating this recipe at home. <laughs> so I need to do it one more. We hope you enjoy cooking this meal at home as well. And I'm sure we'll enjoy eating it as well. Oh, you can see how it smells. Oh, that was wrong. Oh. <laughs>